What's up guys and welcome back to another video. I hope you're well. I hope you're feeling better than I am because uh, I'm not feeling too good at the moment. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll know I've not been training at the moment. This is day six without training. And if you're having some time off right now and you're wondering how long do you have before you're gonna lose that muscle tissue, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, okay? Because it's inevitable if you don't train at all, you are gonna lose that muscle tissue. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you some tips on how we can slow down this process as much as possible. Now, when I was younger, I made the fatal error of training really hard during the week, and then I just have the complete weekend off, off the training, off the diet, off everything. So I would take two steps forward and two steps back, and I never really made any progress during this time period. But also what I would do is, you know, leading up to like a holiday or something like that, I would train really, really hard, Everything would be perfect leading up to the holiday. And then as soon as I go on holiday, boom, that's it. Don't train, don't go to the gym, don't do anything. And even when after the holiday, uh, you know, I'm not training. I would just take time off. And I would just um, <clears throat> I would just undo a lot of progress. It was kind of very pointless. Apart from that, the only other times that I've had quite a bit of time off has been uh, during the lockdown because of you know what. Uh, that was quite alarming uh, how quickly... Uh, I just lost muscle tissue. Um, so what I did do is as soon as I, uh, the borders were open, I just left the UK and I went somewhere where gyms are open. And eventually that's how I ended up in Bali. So, um, you know, it's not all bad. Apart from that, I haven't really had any serious time off. I don't like having time off, uh, you know, any more than a few days. I started to get a little bit agitated, to be honest. I just going to the gym. It improves every single aspect of my day. I can focus better, I can relax better, my mindset's better, uh, everything's better. And the more you can cultivate or the more you can find things which get you in like a positive mindset, which raise your vibration and get you thinking the right way, the better you're gonna do in the long term because your mindset dictates absolutely everything. And for me, the gym is something that kind of centers me uh, and it just keeps me on track. <clears throat> right, so let's get into it. Now, if you look online, there's a lot of science-based nerds on there. Say, oh, well, the studies say this, or the studies say that. First of all, forget about studies, okay? Like, it's good to look at them, okay? But it's not the be-all and end-all. The science nerds are like, oh, well, where's the study for this thing? And where's the study for that thing? What you've got to understand about science is it's biased, okay? Because who's funding these studies, okay? What was their motive? What are the researchers? What's their motive? There are thousands of studies that get uh, researched every single year, but they don't prove the hypothesis that they wanted, and they just don't even get published. They never see the light of day. So you can't always trust studies, okay? With this, I guess it's probably gonna be less of a problem with, with, with it being biased and stuff like that, but even still, there is no substitute for personal experience. There's no substitute. That is the best way to know whether something, uh, how something affects you or whether something's good or not. You wanna know what the best supplement to take is? Try all of them and then monitor your results. You wanna know what the best diet is? Try all of them and then see which one you get the best results from. You wanna know what training split is the best? Try them all and see what you got the best results from. So I hope you get that little bit of point about science, but let's dive into it. So when I don't train, uh, for the first few days, I actually look leaner, okay? I look leaner and I think it's because when you train, you put a lot of stress on your body, okay? It raises the cortisol in your body and your body just holds a little bit more water when you, uh, when you got like, when your cortisol's higher. When you stop training, your cortisol is gonna come down quite quick and um, th therefore you, the water retention underneath the skin is gonna go away a little bit. So I usually look a little bit leaner. But <clears throat> after a few days though I start to look a little bit smaller as well and I think when you go to the gym obviously you get a pump right you get a lot of muscle uh, uh, you get a lot of muscle a lot of blood in the muscle and your muscle is gonna look bigger now the main pump only really lasts for like an hour I wish it would last longer to be honest but you're looking at about an hour okay but I feel like there's kind of like a, a residual pump that sticks around for like maybe 24 hours or something like that it just feel like you still keep a little bit size because of that. Obviously that's gonna go, so you're gonna look a little little bit uh, smaller even still. But then how you're gonna lose size is just glycogen in the muscles. After like a week or so, there's gonna be less glycogen in the muscles because you're not using them how you're using them before. 
and glycogen in the muscle causes uh, more water to be in the muscle and more water in the muscle is going to make it look fuller and bigger so it's going to look like you've lost muscle but you haven't you've just lost glycogen in the muscle you will lose size but you haven't actually lost muscle tissue at this point at a week it's very unlikely unless you're habits and your nutrition and everything else is completely messed up but after a week you shouldn't be losing much much muscle tissue <coughs> excuse me for me though i wouldn't like to go any longer than two weeks i like to play it on the safe end because i enjoy training as well two weeks is the absolute maximum i would want to go without um without properly working my muscles okay two weeks is the absolute maximum you might be able to get away with longer if you do some of these things that uh, I'm going to discuss right now. But for me, I would feel uncomfortable going uh, any longer than two weeks. So I've got some notes here of things that the main things that you need to do to kind of slow that you, will help you slow down this process of losing muscle tissue. OK, so the first one, the most important one is going to be about your nutrition. You want to make sure you're eating at maintenance calories. Do not be in a calorie deficit, okay? Because if you be in a calorie deficit, your body is going to be needing excess resources. It's not going to be going to get it from the food. So it's going to look at your body and it might take some of that muscle. So you don't want to be in a calorie um, deficit. You don't want to be in a calorie surplus either because you're not training. Uh, if you are in a calorie surplus, you're just going to gain body fat. And sometimes you, it might seem like you've lost gains quick but it hasn't, you've just put on more body fat. And if, if, you, if you've got more body fat, you look less lean and sometimes you actually look like you've got less muscle. But in fact, you, you have the same amount of muscle, but you've just got uh, more fat. I have this a lot when I diet. I actually, uh, when, when I'm cutting, I lose a little bit of fat. I, lo um, I look better, obviously, because my muscles are popping more. And people will tell me, oh, you, you look so much bigger now. And I'm actually not as big. I'm, my weight's less, you know what I mean? But it's just that, it's just an illusion of the eye because your muscles stick out more, you look bigger. So that's something to look out for. I would definitely be eating at calorie maintenance. <coughs> Next step, protein. You wanna be eating one gram per pound of body weight. You wanna make sure you get enough protein in. Uh, protein is obviously muscle sparing uh, and a good target to aim for is one gram per pound of body weight. Step number two is you want to do something like uh, you want to do some light movement. Light movement's better than no movement. Uh, I've made a previous video about doing something is better than doing nothing at all. Um, you can go check that out. But you want to make sure you're doing some kind of movement, even if it's just walking, even if it's just getting out in nature, um, even if it's just doing your general day to day activities. That's better than just being sat at home on the sofa. Uh, doing nothing okay so even some kind of movement even though you're not directly working all your muscles it will help quite a lot step number three is sleep okay sleep uh, if you're getting enough if you if you're sleep deprived well that's going to stress your body out you, because your body's in a stress situation uh, you're more likely to be losing muscle tissue so as much as possible you want to make sure you're getting as much good high quality sleep uh, as possible and then this leads into step number four is like stressors like are you uh drinking alcohol a lot are you going out partying all the time like for me i would be going on a holiday with a bunch of lads and just uh getting pissed every single night drinking loads 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 to the point i can't even remember some parts of the night right and then obviously i was going to bed at like you know four five six o'clock in the morning uh, waking up a few hours later feeling like crap and it's doing it all over again <laughs> okay there was definitely no training happening on those holidays but if you're doing that you're putting immense amounts of stress on your body and obviously you're going to lose a lot more muscle tissue than if you were just you know maybe you weren't training but maybe you were just uh just living a relaxed nice holiday or something like that okay and step number five this is the most important is just do some kind of workout okay do some kind of workout okay because um you can always do something it's just a mindset thing like even if you have no equipment you can still do push-ups you can still do body weight squats you can still find some like heavy things around the house or wherever you are maybe you can uh, you know do some laterals with it maybe you can do some curls maybe you can do some tricep uh extensions like it's just a mindset thing <coughs> you will always if you have the right mindset you'll always find a way to be able to do something is it going to be optimal no okay you might have to do a hundred reps per set 
or, or more. But that is for sure is a thousand times better than not getting a workout in at all. Okay, so that would be the biggest thing is to just try and do something because chances are, if you look hard enough, there will be something you could do. Like for example, right now, I could just grab some of these branches and I'm sure I could try and get a workout in. I would look for somewhere where I can do pull-ups and just do some pull-ups. Like guaranteed, if you got the right mindset and you want it enough, you'll find a way to get a workout in. And that's it guys. So uh, make sure you're at your, your food's at maintenance. Make sure you get enough protein in, do some kind of movement, sleep, minimize the stresses as much as possible. And if you do all those things, <coughs> um, you will slow down the rate of muscle tissue uh, as much as possible. But uh, for me, I wouldn't like to go any longer than two weeks. If it's been less than two weeks and you're doing some of these other things that I've talked about, don't worry about it. If it's been a lot longer than two weeks, well, maybe you should think about getting back in the gym. And uh, I hope that helps, guys. You can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching and I'll talk to you in the next one.